Hey guys, today I will talk about the mathematically correct rune setup for Echo that I've been running for the last 100 games. This rune page was recommended to me by a viewer of mine, Eric Green, who was nice enough to do the math on why it is simply worth more than the most common rune pages. I was skeptical at first and thought it is a rune page that is too greedy and only viable in low elo since you're playing without futures market, but after adapting to playing without futures market, I've been fully convinced that it is Echo's best rune page in a lot of scenarios. My win rate with this setup has been around 66% in Master, which should already convince you that it is most definitely a viable option. If you try out this build and have success with it, let me know in the comments and leave a like on the video. Before getting into the math on why Electrocute and Sorcery are great, let's first talk about the common misconceptions on why most people play with these rune setups. Echo has the identity of a scaling assassin with a rather weak early game. Because of this, a lot of people, especially in higher elos, have started playing with first strike to generate as much gold as possible and hit those important item spikes quickly. With the first strike setup, 4 out of the 6 runes are purely for gold generation or saving gold. This setup is not terrible, however in my current understanding it is only worth against tanky team comps where you don't have a lot of one shot potential. The idea behind playing Dark Harvest is to match Echo's theme of scaling, since it is an infinitely scaling rune. However, I'm not gonna beat around the bush here, this rune patch sucks and if you're someone that plays with it, you're holding yourself back severely. The fact that this is Echo's most popular rune page is probably one of the biggest reasons why Echo's win rate is below 50%. Before telling you the numbers of why Electrocute simply deals more damage than Dark Harvest, I also want you to understand the value of the damage these runes deal. With Dark Harvest, a lot of the damage is not valuable at all, since it's often overkill. Echo already has his W passive to execute low HP enemies, so in most cases he does not need a rune to help him with it. The electrocute damage will always come in after hitting 3 spells or attacks in 3 seconds, which enables a lot more one shots and helps getting tankier targets below 30% HP. An even bigger reason however why Dark Harvest is bad is the inconsistency. In games where you are not able to stack it, you are holding yourself back massively. So let's compare the damage. The Dark Harvest numbers that are provided here are from a slightly above average game I played with the Dark Harvest setup a while ago. The stacks from Dark Harvest will of course be different every game, but the numbers that are used for doing the math here are an average of what you can expect to achieve in a good game. At level 3, without any stacks and 24 AP from the Dark Seal purchase, Dark Harvest deals 29 damage while Electrocute deals 54 damage. This number is already considerably higher, but you also need to think about the fact that, especially in the early game, Electrocute is much easier to proc, since you first need to get targets below 50% HP so Dark Harvest is even available. At level 9, with Rocket Belt completed, we have 134 AP and 6 stacks, which is a very realistic number. Here Dark Harvest deals 89 damage, while Electrocute deals 135 damage. At level 13, with 10 Magi stacks and Nashes almost complete, we have 262 AP and 11 stacks. Here Dark Harvest deals 142 damage and Electrocute 202. In the late game, at 703 AP and 16 stacks, Dark Harvest deals 240 damage, while Electrocute deals 338. Let's summarize what all these numbers mean. The biggest takeaway should be that Dark Harvest doesn't scale nearly as well as most people think and the amount of stacks needed to outdamage Electrocute is extremely high and unrealistic. Now, if you know how Dark Harvest works, you might be saying, Echo Liner, you're right, Electrocute does deal more damage, but did you know that the Dark Harvest cooldown gets reset if you get a takedown? And of course I'm aware of this, however, the value of being able to burst on a single target and taking them out of the fight right away is much higher than having an easier time last hitting people. As I already said in the beginning, a lot of times you'll be able to get the last hits even without the Dark Harvest proc, making this rune an overkill. Adding on to that, there is no doubt that Electrocute is stronger in the early game, which is exactly where Echo can use some extra strength to start snowballing. Combined with the early Dark Seal, Echo is actually able to duel a lot of strong early junglers. In my opinion, the only real reason to play with Dark Harvest on Echo is if you're looking to get Penta kills. Let's get into the more controversial part of this video, the secondary rune choice. When I first started playing with this rune page, I thought that I wouldn't be able to manage playing without Futures Market, but after adapting my playstyle and being a bit more aware of my gold generation and recalls, I can confidently say that missing Futures Market is not an actual problem. League of Legends is a numbers game, so let's compare the gold value the Inspiration Tree provides versus the Sorcery Tree. Magical Footwear is worth 300 gold plus 120 extra gold from the 10 bonus movement speed. This value is not bad at all, the one downside however is that you usually won't have the boots until around 10 minutes. The value of Futures Market is a bit more difficult to quantify. 
In general, I think it is a very good rune for Echo that can help you out a lot in being able to finish items more quickly and snowball in games, however it also comes with the drawback of losing 50 gold if you use it. And as I already said, if you use a bit more brain power on having efficient resets and planning ahead with how much gold you are able to generate, it is not an essential rune. Let's see how much gold the sorcery rune patch provides. For this we are gonna use the AP values from the same game as we did with the Dark Harvest and Electrocute comparison. At level 3 with the Dark Seal we have 24 AP without sorcery and 30 with sorcery. This is an AP increase of 25% and has the value of 130 gold. With one item we have 134 AP without and 158 AP with sorcery. This is an 18% AP increase with a gold value of 522. At 2 items and 262 AP without sorcery and 308 with sorcery, the AP increase is 17.5% and the gold value is 1000. With 4 items and 703 AP without sorcery and 754 AP with it, the AP increase is 7.25% and the gold value is 1109. So what does this mean? Especially in the early game, the AP increase is very noticeable in your jungle clearing and damage to champions. Even though we are playing with Gathering Storm, Percentage-wise, the biggest increase in AP is actually early. However, the numbers in the late game are overall much bigger, so a 7% increase of 700 AP is still a lot and can often make the difference in being able to one-shot. So why are these runes great for Echo? The extra AP increases your clear speed, allows you to get more kills in the early game, and most importantly enables you to one-shot squishy targets in basically every game as long as you're not behind. Which is not the case with other rune setups unless you're very ahead. It also scales the best while at the same time helping you the most in the early game. The inspiration tree only provides you with 420 gold in the late game, while sorcery provides over 1000. As I said, the value of futures market is difficult to quantify and in some games it can make a difference. However, as soon as you adapt to playing without it and understand how much more kill pressure you have with the sorcery setup, you will find that completing items is usually not a struggle. Another small part of this rune page that is actually quite important is playing with double adaptive force instead of attack speed. This seemed counterintuitive to me for a long time since the gold value of attack speed is higher and you auto attack a lot while clearing the jungle. However, taking double adaptive force increases your clear speed significantly and also has a small effect on being able to one shot. With sorcery plus double adaptive the full clear time with the raptor's path is 3 minutes and 33 seconds while it is 3 minutes and 41 seconds with attack speed. This is a difference of almost 10 seconds which can easily lead to losing a crap. Another optimization in this build is taking the scaling health over the flat armor or MR. The health outscales the other two runes massively, so unless you're playing versus a full AD slash AP team you should always take the health. The armor rune gets outscaled at level 5 and MR at level 7. In the current jungle meta the armor is also not important at all to stay healthy in the jungle so there is really no reason to take it. This rune setup is the mathematically correct one since it provides Echo with the most amount of gold value while at the same time perfectly suiting his playstyle. I'm not gonna claim that this is the best rune page in every single game since I believe first strike might be better in games where you don't have a lot of one shot potential. However, that is something I'm currently experimenting with and don't have a clear opinion on yet. What I can say however after having played over 100 games with this setup is that it never feels bad. If you want to take a look at Eric Green's document yourself, you can find it in my discord with the link on screen or in the description. I hope this video helps you guys out in feeling much stronger in your games and be sure to let me know if you find success with it. And with that, have a great day my fellow Echo enjoyers.